It is uh, just after 5 p.m. here in Moscow. This is RT with me, Rory Souchay. Thousands of Palestinians are marching all across the West Bank to support their leaders' move to win recognition for their state at the United Nations. There's an atmosphere of jubilation as government services and schools were closed to allow people to go out onto the streets and demonstrate. Artist Paula Slia is there in Ramallah for us. We'll be touching base with her in a short while. But for now, we can talk to her. Dr. Ghassan Khatib, the head of the Palestinian Government Media Center, joining us now live from Ramallah. Uh, good to see you. So there are reports suggesting that President Abbas has accepted a compromise and, and the vote could actually be postponed. Uh, how likely is this? What do you know? This is not likely at all, and we didn't hear that, and we don't think that this is uh, 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 possible. Uh, but in all cases, uh, uh, the essence of our move is not uh, about procedures uh, or about mainly voting. Uh, it is about uh, involving the international community in serious, collective, effective efforts to try to help solving the conflict, to try help ending the Israeli occupation. And we already succeeded uh, in, in engaging the international community in serious diplomatic collective uh, efforts that we hope will enhance the recognition of the Palestinian state, but also help resuming a meaningful peace process uh, with proper international supervision and terms of reference, in addition to hopefully uh, making some efforts to convince Israel to stop its violations to the rights of the Palestinians, especially by stopping the expansion of settlements, because it has been recognized as the main obstacle for the peace process. Well, as you say, there certainly does seem to be a swelling of ground support for the Palestinian leadership Palestine to have its uh, uh, seat at the United Nations. Uh, we believe that 140 uh, different countries, uh, different states are calling, uh, showing their support uh, for this. But if the vote does take place, uh, what do you think the outcome is likely to be? We understand you're just saying Israel is the main opponent to this, but if the vote is a success, what's the outcome? Well, uh, the ambition of the Palestinian people uh, is that the international community will uh, meet its obligations. Uh, and take up its responsibilities um, uh, to the uh, natural rights of freedom for the Palestinians. Palestinian people believe that we fulfilled our obligations, we completed uh, uh, the building of the institutions of a state, uh, and we are uh, uh, developing uh, an effective security system and uh, other government uh, agencies, and that it's about time for the Palestinians to enjoy uh, uh, statehood and independence. That's why we're hoping that the majority of the members of the international community will vote for ending the occupation, will vote for the independence of Palestine. At the end, the international community is in consensus on uh, the two-state solution. We already have one, Israel. It's about time to have the other one, Palestine. All right, as, you, as you were saying, though, there is a massive uh, amount of global support here for the establishment of Palestinian statehood here. Uh, as we were mentioning a, a short while ago, 140 states showing their support. But let's talk about this. As you were mentioning, uh, Washington, America and Israel, uh, America threatening to veto uh, the vote, Israel showing firm opposition to this. How is Israel likely to react if indeed Palestinians are granted statehood? What do you expect to see? Well, Israel is threatening uh, of uh, uh, imposing economic sanctions and other kind of sanctions. Uh, but Israel must get serious messages from the international community that they cannot have a free hand uh, in exploiting the Palestinian people and the Palestinian occupied territories. Israel has been enjoying uh, uh, the fact that the Palestinian community, the, is, the international community is hiding behind the bilateral negotiations and stalling these talks mainly in order to continue with the illegal settlement expansion. It's about time for the international community to deal in more direct and in more effective way with the Israeli insistence to continue violating the international law. Uh, we're not talking about anything beyond what the international legality would guarantee to us. It is part of the 
foreign policy of every single country in the world that the Jewish settlement expansion in the occupied territories is both illegal and an obstacle to peace. If we are serious about achieving peace, so it's about time to remove this obstacle, the settlement activities in our land. Now, as we were saying earlier here on RT, uh, certainly the, the, the world's eyes are on America, on Israel, and certainly on the UN in New York. Dr. Kassin Khatib, uh, the head of the Palestinian Government Media Center, live in Ramallah. Thank you very much. All right, well, let's uh, get back now to continuing with the story here. We'll uh, cross back live to uh, Artie's uh, Paula Slea, who is in Ramallah for us. And Ramallah, uh, uh, um, excuse me, uh, Paula, thank you very much for standing by for us. Uh, people in Ramallah, they uh, certainly seem to be in high spirits today. Uh, how high are the hopes that statehood can actually be achieved, do you think? Well, the high spirits are not only here in Ramallah. You're seeing high spirits right across the West Bank. It's estimated that some 20,000 people have taken to the streets of Ramallah. People took off work. The schools closed early, and many of the businesses shut down. I'm standing in Al Manar, which is really the focal point of Ramallah. And in this area, the businesses, the shops, and the restaurants have been open so that people can really celebrate what's almost a carnival atmosphere. Now, this does kickstart three days of peaceful demonstrations that the Palestinians from the start said they would be holding in the run-up to the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, making that bid on Friday for statehood at the United Nations. We've seen similar such celebrations across the West Bank. In Hebron, there were an estimated 17,000 people turning out for parties and carnivals today. Sim similar scenes unfolding in Bethlehem and in Nablus. There were two isolated incidents of violence that did potentially well, at least had the potential to mar the day. One in Kalandia checkpoint not far from here. There was also a little bit of violence in Hebron, but both of those have been brought under control. And the people I've been talking to saying that not only do they have a commitment to holding peaceful demonstrations, but certainly they have a commitment to making sure that this historic moment on the world stage is seen and felt by everyone in the international community. Well, indeed, Paula, as people are saying, when it comes to the international community and its view on Israel, Israel is known for using a heavy-handed response uh, when it deals with Palestinians in the West Bank and in Gaza. Uh, Israel has been preparing for violence uh, in response to this uh, statehood drive now for months. Uh, what's been done as far as you know? Well, the Israeli army certainly has been preparing for violence, but what many say is that almost in this preparation, it's almost encouraging, if one can say, that the violence to happen. For several months, the Israeli army has been undergoing an operation called Operation Summer Seas, and this is for their fear that these peaceful demonstrations that the Palestinians say they will hold could erupt and descend into violence. But their eye is not only on the Palestinians. The Israeli army also has their eye on the roughly half a million Israeli settlers. Just yesterday, there were a number of demonstrations by Israeli settlers across the West Bank, and the settlers themselves are adamant that they will not allow the Palestinians to, what they say, take over their land. And that sets the stage for potential conflict further down the line. Now, we are hearing initial rumors that some kind of deal has been struck behind the scenes. We do not have confirmation and we do not have the details yet. But what we do understand is that the Palestinian president of Mahmoud Abbas might on Friday be still making his bid for statehood, but instead of asking for the vote to happen at the same time, he might delay that until potentially sometime next year. If indeed this is the case, it means that American and Israeli pressure on the Palestinians has come to bear fruit to a certain extent. From the start, Israel and the United States have been putting pressure on Abbas not to go ahead with a statehood bid until there is some kind of peace talks or negotiations on the table. Certainly we've seen from the United States side that they've been putting pressure on donors that they give money to, those donors who support Palestinian causes. They've started cutting back in this. And so bit by bit, the pressure not only from the United States, but certainly also from Israel, is starting to be felt by the Palestinians. But certainly here in Palestine itself, the mood is jubilant. People are very excited. People have a real sense that history is in the making. Indeed, Paula, as you were saying, there were jubilation on the Palestinian side of the border with Israel, but perhaps exactly the opposite emotion uh, on the Israeli side. Artis Paula Slia, they're live in Ramallah. Thank you very much. All right, so with an RT, uh, the showdown uh, over the Palestinian statehood is, uh, for the meantime, set to dominate the UN General Assembly, with the majority of the players, including Russia, uh, ready to support the bid. Uh, the US promises to veto the move unless Palestinians and Israelis relaunch the peace talks. Now, RT's Marina Portnaya has details on this from New York.
The issue that remains at center stage for those attending the United Nations General Assembly is the issue of the Palestinian campaign for UN membership and statehood. It's something that the majority of the General Assembly does support, but it is something that the United States has been speaking out against. Now, the U.S. has threatened to use its veto in the Security Council because no sides, Palestine or Israel, uh, are ready to return to the negotiating table. But Foreign Minister Lavrov did say that it is uh, within uh, Palestinians' right to ask for U.N. membership, and the United States should not get in the way of aspirations for any country. The Middle East Quartet will not meet in the near future. The recent meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, has showed that the U.S. would not like to see the Palestinian question raised at the U.N. We think that it would be preferable to sit at the negotiating table first, but both sides are not ready for it because there's no agreement between them. We think that one mustn't deprive the Palestinian administration of the right to ask the UN Security Council to speak out on its statehood bid. It was just this time last year that US President Barack Obama addressed the international body saying that when he comes back to the United Nations in 2011, he hopes that Palestine will be a member of the United Nations. And now, 12 months later, the US, of course, is backpedaling and threatening to veto uh, the aspirations of Palestine. Also reports coming out that U.S. President Barack Obama will be meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. This was a meeting that was not scheduled up to this point, of course, with the U.S. so against the Palestinian bid for U.N. membership. But if this meeting does take place, who knows, maybe the story will shift into a much different gear. That is Marina Portnoy reporting right there. Well, uh, uh, plenty more for you to come this hour here on.